This is the second video in a series on how to use MonoBuilder to automate geoprocessing tasks. In the previous video, we looked at how we can begin to create a uh, MonoBuilder model uh, in a geodatabase that we created looking at Boston 311 data. So we've already got that model up and running. So uh, we have so far brought in our Boston 311 CSV table into our geodatabase. And then we've created an event layer out of it or a series of points that we've plotted. The next step is to uh, aggregate those points by neighborhood. So in order to do that, we're going to do a spatial join between the points and our polygon, our neighborhood polygon layer. So I'm going to expand this a bit so we can see it more clearly. Um, I need to access the spatial join tool. And so I'm going to find that tool, in this case, in the analysis tools overlay spatial join. So I'm going to drag that spatial join tool into my model builder and then I'm going to access its um, parameters by double clicking on it. Now the target features in this case are the things to which um, items are going to be joined. So in this case I'm going to be um, choosing the uh, neighborhood layer as my target. It's going to be receiving the points. So I'm going to navigate to the file that contains my uh, Boston Neighborhoods shapefile, which hasn't been incorporated in the model yet, so you didn't see it as an option quite yet. The join features are going to be coming from the model, so this time I'm going to be taking that uh, event layer that I just created those points and specifying that. Um, the output I can specify, it's already defaulting into my geodatabase, so I'm going to uh, leave that and then I'm going to choose the way that it joins to my data. So a one-to-one -one situation is uh, essentially the relationship that I want. And essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have multiple points or lots of points in each uh, neighborhood polygon. And so we want to get a summary number of those points. Um, so this makes the um, field map control also very important in this case because um, all that I can really retain from the point layer um, are the count. So all of the other fields that are in the point layer are not going to be really uh, useful in this case. So I'm actually going to eliminate all of the other um, columns in there because they're just going to, they're not going to really uh, provide any use. So I'm just going to highlight them and hit the X over here on the right hand side uh, and eliminate that. So all that's going to be re retained uh, is the data originally in the neighborhoods layer and it's going to append a uh, count field with the count of the number of points in there. The match, op match options intersect, which is adequate uh, in the case of a point layer. So once that's set, I'll hit OK. okay. Um, and so <clears throat> now I've got a new output. You can see, again, that it's making the connections for me. As we move forward, we're going to add on more um, steps here. Now I know what I'm doing here, so I can run this uh, process at any point. In fact, what we could do is we could run the process and then work on it as we work incrementally. So let me run that process so we can at least get ourselves to this point and I can check my output. Once the process is complete we can see our output uh, messaging tells us how the process proceeded and if we encountered any errors it wouldn't be indicated in red and the process would have stopped but we've got no errors at this point. So I can see that I've run the model. The shadows appear to tell me that the model has been run. And if I want to, I can actually check the output at this point. So if I right click on that last output item and choose Add to Display, I can see that item over here on the table of contents. So I can check the attributes and I can look through it and I can see that um, I've got a joint count here and this column indicates um, the count of the number of points that fell within that each polygon. And so I can do a quick um, analysis of it to make sure that it looks like it's got and so I can see that yep it's got over 58,000 points which is consistent with the number of records that were in the point layer that I looked at previously so that looks good so I know I can continue uh, working on this item I don't need it to be here yet so I'm gonna uncheck that add to display and you see it gets removed from that from the table of contents very conveniently so the next thing that needs to happen is now I've got my neighborhoods and they have counts of the number of uh, Boston 301 requests that happened in each one. Uh, I need then, to, in order to calculate one of my metrics, which is the number of reports per person, I'm going to need to have the uh, number of people in each neighborhood. And the na unfortunately, the neighborhood data does not have that. So I'm going to use census data and spatially assign 
populations to each of the neighborhoods. So to do that, I'm going to do a spatial join again. So once again, I'm going to turn to the Arc Toolbox and drag over that spatial join tool. In this case, um, I'm going to actually uh, join the neighborhood data to the census data rather than the other way around. And the reason is that the tools that are available to me when I do it in this direction are slightly different, and I'll explain that in a second. So I'm going to navigate to my census data folder, and I'm going to use census block data. This is the smallest unit you can get, and all I need is population data, which is easy enough. And the join features are going to be the output of that last process. And so you'll see now that we're beginning to accumulate um, other items. So this, this item right here, the new spatia, is the last item that was chosen, which is this one right here. And I'm going to use, again, a join to one to one. Um, and I'm not going to keep all target features because, again, I'm only going to use, I'm only concerned with the ones that um, uh, fall within the neighborhood. But again, keep in mind the target is the, is the census data, not the neighborhood. So um, all I really need to retain are those items and I want to count up their population. So I'm going to remove the unnecessary fields that are in the census population since I'm not going to use them, and which means essentially most of them. Um, and the only ones I'm really wanting to retain are the um, population data, which is in, in, in the POP100 uh, um, field. And I can also retain the uh, fields from the neighborhood layer. So I'm going to retain the join count, which contains the name of the, uh, or the, the total of um, uh, Boston 301 reports in each neighborhood. And I'm also going to retain name and I retain acres because we can use that as well later. That's going to be the area that we're going to use. So uh, the join count, in fact, at this point, one of the nice things is I can uh, rename this item. So Uh, which is going to be a little easier to remember when we're looking at distinguishing which are the um, uh, requests or Boston 31 calls. The match option, and this is why we're doing it in this direction, why we're joining the, the neighborhoods to the census data rather than the other way around like we did with the um, points. And that's because we have access to a particular uh, spatial relationship have their center in. And what this means is that um, the spatial join will occur uh, in this situation where the target features have their centroid within the uh, join features, that is to say the neighborhoods. Ideally, I would like it to be the other way around because it would allow me to go straight uh, to join the um, data, the census data to the neighborhoods, uh, but I can't do it that way, so we're going to have to kind of do a slightly longer process. In any case, we have all the parameters set, so we can hit OK. And we can see then that they, it's established, the connections are established, and the models in a ready run state. At this point, it's starting to get a little messy over here. So I could start to um, drag out these items um, manually to try to sort them out, um, but it, it's going to get a little hard there. So one of the nice things about Model Builder is that you have an auto layout function. So if I click on that, it's going to reassemble my model so that it's a little easier to see, or it's a little more, it's a little, it's less messy, it's more organized. And it's going to organize it in a linear fashion going from left to right, as you can see the direction of the arrows. You can actually control these parameters, but we're going to leave the default for right now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to we spatially join the census, the uh, neighborhoods to the census data, which results in a layer that consists of all the census blocks um, that fall within um, each of the neighborhoods. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that output and we're going to um, summarize it so that we have um, essentially a summary of each neighborhood with the total of the population uh, that falls within each neighborhood. So to access a summarized tool, we're going to be looking again within the analysis tools toolbox and within that the statistics toolbox. And here we want to choose the uh, summary statistics. And the summary statistics will also, is what is essentially uh, the same thing as summer, summarize within ArcMap. So I'm going to access the um, parameters here. The input table is again the output of this last item right here. So we take that item right there. We're going to create an output table from that. The statistics field is going to be the population data 
And so when I choose that, it drops down to the lower field uh, window over here, and you see a red X because I need to specify the type of statistic that I want. So in this case, I wanted to sum up um, the populations of all the blocks that fall within each uh, neighborhood. I also want to bring over my um, uh, join count, my requests, um, and this is going to be the um, original data of the count of the number of uh, Boston 301 reports. So in this case, I don't need to sum them up because they're actually repeating. So I'm just going to take the first uh, from each. Uh, and I can also bring over um, the acres. And again, I'll take the first. The case field is going to be is what allows us to do the, the grouping or the, the, the category by which group the aggregation is done. So of course, this is going to be name or the names of the neighborhoods. And that's how it's going to group up summing up the populations, uh, but retaining the first of the, re the request and acres numbers since those have been repeated throughout. So hit OK. We'll see that's linked up, ready to run. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, once we've summarized that data, and so we end up with a table of um, summary statistics showing the, the total population um, per neighborhood. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join the um, output table of summary statistics to the original uh, Boston neighborhoods uh, layer that contains the join count. So this we want to join this to this, or rather the other way around. So um, we're going to again need a we're going to need a join um, tool, and so that tool can be found under Data Management Tools and Joins. So that we're going to be based on a join field, and we're going to bring that tool in, and we're going to connect again this to this. So um, we can do this uh, by op accessing the uh, parameters by, of course, double clicking, but we can also use the connect tool to do this. And sometimes it's actually easier because you might lose track of which uh, file within the long list of items is the one. And I know that along the process, this is one of the inputs. So the Boston neighborhoods is, in this case, the target. So if I choose that, I can say that's the input table or the, or the, or the uh, target table. And then this one over here, I'm going to connect. By clicking is the join table all right and so now I've got not all the parameters it's still not in a ready run state so if I double click now I can see how it's uh, assigning those variables so the um, neighborhood uh, is the again the input table the thing to which the items will be joined the join will be based on the name of the neighborhood and the same thing within the, um, the census uh, summary table that we have here um, Again, we have an option to bring over um, the data that we've accumulated, and so I take an I take advantage of this because it allows me to um, uh, retain some of the data that um, that I want to keep, um, and also to rename it, um, which can be it can be helpful. Um, so I'm going to retain the, um, po the some of the population, which of course is important the first rec the request and then and the total number of acres um, so I'll hit OK it appears in a ready run state okay and so now we have essentially most of the items we have for assembling the data notice that some of these are shadowed again because they've been run previously but these haven't even though they're in a ready run state so I could run this process right now in order to um, make sure that it's all running properly. In fact, I think I'll do that. And it'll when I run it, it'll run from the last point, uh, the, from the process that hasn't been run. So it won't start back in the beginning. It'll actually start over here with the spatial join. All right, we see the process completed without any problems. So we can close that. And so we have all of them appear in a, in a, in a run state. So I'm going to, again, clean them up by using the auto layout. Um, and so you, interestingly, you can see how it kind of assembles the uh, sequence of events and, uh, and, and indicates the connections between these different options. So this product over here, this output at the very end, is the neighborhood layer that contains the um, uh, uh, joined data uh, with the counts of not only the number of reports per neighborhood, but also the total number of people per, neighbor, per neighborhood. So in fact, we can add that to the display to just check out our product and uh, take a look at it. And so we see then that we have our original join count, which is the number of um, reports per neighborhood. We see the names. We see the acres. Those haven't changed. Um, and then we also see the sum of the population. And we also see some redundant information. I probably didn't need to retain that, as it turns out. 
but that's okay. So we have most of our data now. So then the last thing we want to do in this sequence right here is we want to calculate um, the number of um, reports per neighborhood in terms of per person as well as per area. So in order to do that, we're going to end up using, we're going to have to add some fields to this data to uh, calculate that process. So we'll do that in the second sequence or the, or the third video here.